Welcome to the Language Games Podcast. My name is John Kaus. Today is part 14 of our Van Til's Apologetic series. Last week, we spent the bulk of our time analyzing why Van Til's Apologetic is a deductive argument. This, this week, we're going to analyze what it means for the argument to be a truth-directed transcendental argument. So transcendental, what does that term mean? Well, if a proposition is a necessary consequent of knowledge, so if you have knowledge, then this proposition, whatever you pick, uh, if it necessarily follows from that, then it's a transcendental. So whatever follows necessarily, and we're talking about propositions here, whatever proposition follows necessarily from there being knowledge is a transcendental. So you cannot have knowledge without the transcendentals that follow from it. This argument then is truth directed because what follows from knowledge is the truth, is a truth about the world or the collection of truths, you know, the Christian worldview. It's not a belief about these truths or our having evidence for these truths. So it's truth directed. So that first premise, if there is knowledge, then Christianity is true. That is the transcendental premise. Okay, that's truth directed. Then the second premise, there is knowledge. And then the conclusion, Christianity is true. So we focus in here on this, this first premise. Notice the distinction though here. If, I, if we change this to being belief directed, it would then read, if there is knowledge, then we must believe in Christianity. There is knowledge, therefore the conclusion is we must believe in Christianity, which is of course a, a, weaker, uh, a weaker argument because it could still be that Christianity isn't true, we just have to believe in it. Bonson says, and he does this in a couple of, of, of spots, but in the Impossibility of the Contrary book, he says, what I'm going to show is that to prove anything, you have to believe in God. It would seem like Bonson here is trying to make a weaker argument. Not that Christianity is true, but that we must believe it. But that, I don't think that's, that's his intention. Uh, he does mention in the Transcendental Conference that he did in 1995 that if Van Til's argument could only show that we must believe in Christianity and not the stronger truth-directed truth form, that he'd be okay with that. Now, he goes on to say that he doesn't think that it's limited to that weaker form and then talks about why he thinks that is. Um, but So we'll come back to this quote, but I could see why if someone read this, they would think, oh, Bonson is basically going for the weaker version, and I don't think that's the case. But we'll come back to that. All right, so if there is knowledge, then we must believe in Christianity. That's, that'd be a belief directed. You could have a, um, like an evidence directed one. You could say if there is knowledge, then we must have evidence for our belief in the truth of Christianity. And if you put these things together, you would get something like, if there is knowledge, then we know Christianity to be true, which would have its own you know, uh, distinct quality to it compared to truth-directed or justification-directed or belief-directed. All right, let's look at this for a second. We're going to put some, go through a, a logical uh, rule here uh, just to, to show you how these things all connect together. So a proposition P, if it implies Q, and P also implies R, and P also implies S, then we can conclude that P implies all three of them together. So if P implies Q, P implies R, and you can have whatever, however many you want, right? If, if P implies 10 propositions individually, then it implies them together in one, one uh, conjunction. All right, this is important because it shows you the distinction of what's going on with this first premise that we're working through. So when we worked through the direct form of Van Til, the, the direct version of Van Til's apologetic, the first premise, or the, the first main premise that we, we were proving is that Christ, the truth of Christianity is necessary for knowledge. So that's if K, then C. But notice we didn't prove that if Christianity or uh, if there is knowledge, then we must believe that Christianity is true. And we didn't prove that if there is knowledge, then we must be justified in this belief. Okay, but let's say we could do that. What if we had proven all three of these? Well, we define knowledge as justified true belief. So if the truth of the proposition follows from knowledge, and then our belief in this proposition follows, and our justification in this belief follows, then you put that together, and what we have here in the conclusion 
is our knowledge of Christianity is necessary for us knowing anything. So that would be, you know, if there's knowledge, then we know Christianity to be true. And what happens, though, sometimes when we're out there and we're giving the apologetic is we, will, we tend to just move very fluidly from the truth of Christianity is necessary for knowledge, our belief in it is necessary for knowledge, our being justified in it is necessary for knowledge, our knowing God is necessary for knowledge. But if you only prove one, you can't then just use all the others because they are distinct. So we have proven the first one, but we have not proven the next two, which was what we would need to do. So coming back to that Bonson quote, I think this is just Bonson being loose with his language. If you read Bonson's works and Van Til's works, they often do this, where they talk about Christianity needing to be true for there to be knowledge, and then later that we must believe in God to know anything, and elsewhere that we must know God to know anything. I, of course, agree with all of these formulations, but we do not need to make good in, on all of them to make our case. If we prove the truth of Christianity, then our job is done. The question still remains, however, is belief in the Christian God or belief in the truth of Christianity necessary for knowledge? Is knowing that this God exists necessary for knowledge? If yes, then Van Til and Bonson were correct to move loosely from truth to belief to knowledge, even though they did not prove it. To do this, though, we would have to prove that belief in the truth of Christianity and being justified in this belief are both necessary for knowledge. And we, as far as I can see, there are at least two ways that we can do this. We could show that if Christianity is necessary for knowledge, the truth of Christianity, then what follows is that uh, the belief in this truth is necessary and also being justified in this belief is necessary. And we could say, hey, you know, we're proving that Christianity is true and the Bible teaches that belief uh, in, the, in Christianity is necessary for knowledge and justification in this belief is necessary for knowledge. And since the Bible is true, then we can infer that um, our, we would have to know that Christianity is true, right, to, to know anything. All right, that's one way to do it, is, is you've, you've proven the, the truth of Christianity, you've proven the truth of the Bible, so then you just go to the Bible and show that it teaches that B is necessary for K and J is necessary for K. The second would be, the second way to do this would be to show that the very nature of transcendentals requires the agents who have knowledge to believe the transcendentals and to be justified in those beliefs. Belief in transcendentals is not optional, nor is lacking justification in such a belief. That would be the other way to do it. Either option works for Van Til's argument, but I, pr I prefer the latter approach since it is proving something true about all transcendentals, not just about the most pivotal transcendental that Christianity is true. In fact, I'm going to release a series on this topic in the coming months, so stay, stay tuned if that interests you. Next week, we'll discuss in greater detail what I consider to be a reasonably accurate description of a presupposition. We've got to get this clarified, make this a better presentation, and then how uh, presuppositions relate to transcendentals and meta-assumptions in our reasoning. For more content like this, you can find us on x at underscore language games. See you next time.